Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am starting with the topic of autopsy and this is the first lecture of this series and the contents of this talk today will be that there will be introduction about what is autopsy, what are various types of autopsies, authority for the autopsy and rules and laws which are necessary for the autopsy and what are the main objectives of different types of autopsies. Then I will be also discussing the uh, what is virtual autopsy and what is corpus delicti. Autopsy rate, autopsy index will be discussed and what are various techniques of autopsy. So starting with the lecture, autopsy. It means self, auto means self and ops mean being, viewing. So it means self viewing. Two other synonymous words which are also used, necropsy and postmortem examination. Necros mean dead and so it means the examination of dead. Recently the autopsy is used for the human beings and necropsy is used for the animals or other inanimate things. Postmortem examination is the examination after death and in USA and some other countries autopsy and postmortem examinations they are two different procedures. Postmortem examination in USA postmortem examination means only external examination of the body without cutting it. However, Collection of specimens like fluids, urine, blood with the help of needle, they are included in this examination. Whereas the autopsy means complete examination of dead body, both external surface and the internal contents after opening its cavities. And also the materials can be collected for histopathological, biochemical or toxicological examinations. So what are various types of autopsies? They are physical autopsy which may be either medical or medical legal, then psychological autopsy, virtual autopsy and mini autopsy. So physical autopsy is also divided into medical and medical legal autopsy whereas psychological uh, autopsy is basically a sort of investigation and virtual autopsy I will be discussing and mini autopsy. Now the medical or the hospital autopsy. The medical autopsy is the one which is conducted for the medical reasons to confirm or to establish the diagnosis where the clinical diagnosis during the life of the patient remains unascertained. These medical autopsies are conducted on natural deaths occurring in the hospitals. By the, they are conducted autopsies by the physicians or the pathologists to establish the medical cause of death. Especially where the clinical investigation during the life of the patient remains futile in establishing it. Now the medical legal autopsy. It is autopsy of all unnatural deaths. And it is the complete scientific study of the dead body externally as well as internally to establish cause, mode and manner of death. Under the law of state for the protection of society and administration of justice. So this is the definition of medical legal autopsy. So it's a complete scientific examination. Now about the psychological uh, autopsy. It is an investigation. Basically it's an investigation along with the physical autopsy of the dead body. Psychological autopsy is performed in alleged cases of suicide to know about the mental status of the deceased at the time of death. 
information about the background of the person it is also gathered from the parents from the society from the neighbors from the office colleagues <clears throat> now about the mini autopsy this is the term which is used for a type of partial autopsy in which there is extensive organ sampling can be done or organs removal can be done through a limited incision on the abdomen for example about 50 cm incision in the up, upper abdomen can be made for the collection of the viscera now virtual autopsy which is also known as vertopsy so what is virtual autopsy it is an emerging science where the doctors attempt to assess the co cause of death using digital radio diagnostics it is an post mortem examination without compromising the integrity of the body even without collection of the sample by using the digital ct scan and mri instead of cutting the body the countries like switzerland usa australia and malaysia and where japan and where uh, there are also other countries they are already using this technique if due to some reason or disease the autopsy of the body is not possible then the help of radiological examination we can detect the cause of death x-ray ultrasound mri ct scan they are done now how it is done what is the procedure first the body is put in a sealed bag and then it is put through the ct scan machine it finishes in seconds and acquires about 50000 images of bodies inside so how fast and how quick it is internal bleeding bullets bullet tracks and hidden fractures they can also be detected by this technique which are hard to find out in the routine autopsy procedures it can complement the standard autopsy techniques and will increase the quality of assessment of the knowing about the cause of death it permits additional analysis by other forensic pathologists on the same day that means you can send the data by mail or by uh, other multimedia techniques you can send to the other uh, person other expert and you can Uh, get the opinion from the other person at the same time on the same body and it can even be studied even after years when some allegation crops up in future then the virtual autopsy methods which are used they are post mortem ct scan which is computed or computerized tomography and mri which is mass resonance images they are increasing nowadays in posthumous screening this is the machine which is used in virtual autopsy there are may a number of other machines which are attached to it they are also used high resolution surface scanner it is for the detailed documentation of the surface of the body then computer assisted biopsy can be done for this the automatic collection of tissues and blood sample can be done with the help of this machine then magnetic resonance resonance or computed tomography it is for the three dimensional imaging then the heart lung machine is being used it is used for the posthumous use of contrast solution in the circulatory system to know about the potency of the or where there is leak or damage of the circulatory system 
So this is the machine which is you can see is the posthumous screening machine which is used in the virtual autopsy. There is attached high res resolution surface scanner and a computer supported biopsy is also attached. Then magnetic resonance and computed tomography which gives you the three dimensional image and the heart lung machine which is used for the using of contrast to check the circulatory system. So this is complete machines which are helpful in virtual autopsy. Now what are the benefits of virtual autopsy? Body remains intact number one. Then it takes less time. You can see that in few seconds you can get 20,000, 25,000 slices of the inside of the body. And it can be reviewed later as and when it is required. And it can take the help of other remote forensic pathologist by sending the data and receiving his opinion. For forensic autopsy surgeons who are not basically trained in radiological techniques, it is difficult for them to understand the axial anatomic orientation of the axial post-mortem CT images. That means they are unable to read the CT images. But now there is a computer software which permits the post-mortem CT data sets to be quickly and intelligently re-sliced in a real time at the body and it narrows the gap between the radiological imaging and autopsy. That means it translates the uh, CT data sets into real images of autopsy. Now the autopsy can be positive or negative autopsy. The negative autopsy mean where the cause of death cannot be certain besides all the efforts. All the efforts mean the dissection of the body and analytical or histopathological or biochemical or all the investigation which is done fail to reveal the cause of death then the autopsy is said to be negative autopsy. And the positive autopsy when there is definitive conclusion about the cause of death can be drawn. Now, there is a decline of autopsy in our country and also world over. In our country, basically the hospital or the medical autopsy, they are usually not done. And there is a, also a global decline in the practice of medical autopsy for various reasons. And what are the causes of decline? Religious restrictions, emotional uh, emotionally the persons do not allow then the conceptual beliefs of the people so all these social uh, taboos and myths and their beliefs they re refrain them to get the autopsy of their disease then the hospitals are overburdened and the doctors main concern is the treatment of living <clears throat> Number third, the teaching staff and the doctors, they are already overcommitted, and there are more advancements in the diagnostic aids like CT scan, MRI, they are available, so they are more appropriately diagnosing the diseases. So the suggestions for the improvement are that all the big hospitals should have the arrangements of the autopsy examination but sometimes it is found that the clinical diagnosis is wrong in establishing the cause of death in about 50 percent of cases besides all these fancy gadgets developments so in our country the hospital autopsy is not usually done so there is a generally decline in the practice of medical autopsy and whenever the medical autopsy there is a conflict or there is a negligence or there is an allegation of some uh, wrongdoing by the doctor or any uh, paramedics 
then this medical autopsy will naturally become the medical legal autopsy. Now what is autopsy rate? Autopsy rate is the number of autopsies conducted on all deaths occurring in a community. So it is the total number of autopsies including medical, medical legal or other mini autopsies or psychological autopsies, all types of autopsies on all deaths. Whereas the autopsy index is the total number of medical legal autopsies. This is total number of medical legal autopsies conducted on all deaths occurring in a community. Now starting the discussion in detail on medical autopsy. The medical autopsies are conducted on natural deaths occurring in, in the hospitals and it is done by the physicians or the pathologists especially where the clinical investigation during the life remains uncertain. And it is done to establish the medical cause of death and the authority for the medical autopsy is the next of kin, the relatives or the legal heirs. They give the authority for the medical autopsy. And the autopsy surgeon, they for the medical autopsy it is conducted by the pathologist which is having a totally different objective in his mind and his training and approach is also different. Now the objectives of medical autopsy will be that it will try to find out the medical cause of death to confirm and compare the clinical diagnosis with the autopsy findings and to know the effectiveness effectiveness of the treatment or the therapy which has been done during life. And for the diagnosis purpose and study of the disease process and also for the academics research purposes. Now the medical legal autopsy. The medical legal autopsy as we know it is a complete scientific study of the dead body internal as well as its external under the law of state for administration of justice and betterment of the society. So it's a complete definition of medical legal autopsy. So what is the significance? This is of great importance in cases of suspicious deaths to rule out any foul play. Because the disposal of such cases only on the basis of clinical diagnosis diagnosis alone is not sufficient. So all the natural deaths they are subjected to autopsy upon the request of the police. Now the what are the rules of the autopsy? <clears throat> the authority and the laws related to autopsy, medical legal autopsy. Authority in all natural deaths, unnatural deaths is the state. So whenever an unnatural death occurs, the authority or the custody of the, that body is with the state. So state will give the authority for the autopsy in medical legal autopsies. And police acting as state gives the authority to conduct autopsy and it is performed under the law section 174 and section 176 of criminal procedure code of Pakistan and the police rules 1934 section 2534 and 2536 they give the authority to police to get the autopsy done from the doctors. So these are the laws and the rules for the conduction of medical legal autopsy. Under section 174 the area investigating officer visits the scene of crime and if there is any suspicious any suspicion of foul play then under section 176 he requests the area magistrate for further investigation and forward the body for autopsy to the nearest autopsy center. 
नो हु इज द अटोपसी सर्जन इन मेडिकल लीगल अटोपसिस द अथोराइज मेडिकल ऑफिसर एट द नियरेस्ट अटोपसी सेंटर विल कंडक्ट अटोपसी द तहसील और द डिस्ट्रिक्ट हॉस्पिटल और द टीचिंग हॉस्पिटल दे आर authorized to conduct autopsy in teaching hospital it is conducted by the demonstrators of the forensic medicine now what are the objectives of medical legal autopsy it is said that autopsy is a dialogue between dead body and the autopsy surgeon like who are you that means identity how you died that means to know the medical cause of death how it happened about the fatal period and since how long you are dead you want to know the time since death who caused it that means the manner of death that is it is suicidal homicidal or accidental no discussing one by one the objective of autopsy number one first objective is the establishment of personal identification then the next objective is to determine the medical cause of death the third is the to know about the manner of death time since death sorry time of death or fatal period that how much time was taken between injury and death and time since death that the post mortem interval how much time has been elapsed between death and autopsy now regarding the personal identity as is the word explained it is the identification of a person it is absolute fixation of individuality of a person what are various methods which are commonly used it is subjective method subjective examination objective examination and third party method of examination in subjective examination the subject is in front of you from head to toe everything is his parameter of identity like age sex race height weight build hair eyes chin face everything is a parameter for that individual so from head to toe everything will help you in identifying or absolute fixation of the individuality of that person in objective examination any object having an association with the subject is the objective examination it may be his related documents like id card driving license passport or ornaments and the clothes so every object having an association with the subject is the objective method of examination then the third party third party means any third person confirms the identity and that third person can be parents relatives next of kin the friends and police but at autopsy the body may be in three condition when the body is fresh then the most appropriate method is the third party method in early decomposition the subjective and objective method of identification are used whereas in advanced decomposition or skeletonize only the objective examination of the available material is done <clears throat> now the next objective is to know the medical cause of death the medical cause of death is a complex which comprises of chain of events a complete anatomical study of the body and also with the help of various aided procedures will determine the medical cause of death 
so the first step there will be structural damage like damage to the heart with sharp edge weapon compression of the neck with the rope so this is the first step to induce structural damage then this is the cause of death so the organic or structural damage by any weapon is the cause which will step forward into the next step second step which is the uh, functional disturbances and which are causing the physiological derangements or systemic failure so a structural damage will lead to functional disturbances and so the cause of death will be any but there will be a chain of events which will then lead to a vital systems failure so that is the medical cause of death starting with the cause inducing this structural damage leading to functional uh, disturbances and ultimately a uh, vital systems failure which is the medical cause of death it will finally move to the next which is when it is not interfered with to the terminal event and this terminal event depends upon which vital system is predominantly interfered with as we know about the tripod of life they are main pillars of life that is cvs cns and respiration they are the tripod of life so that determines the mode of death mode of death is atria mortis gateway to death so these vital systems are the gateways to death they are tripod of life but their damage will lead to the portal of entry at the gateway to death so that are ultimately the modes of death so we know these uh, vital system they lead to three modes of death cns when is interfered with it will be causing coma cvs cerebral vascular system it will cause syncope and the respiration whenever the respiration is interfered with it will be causing asphyxia so these are three modes coma syncope and asphyxia the example like injury to the heart by knife is the structural damage will cause perfuse hemorrhage is the functional disturbance and will further lead to circulatory shock or syncope which is the terminal event so cause will be leading to mechanism and mechanism will be ultimately leading to mode so organic damage leading to functional disturbance and to terminal event which is the mode so this is the medical cause of death now about the manner of death manner of death can be natural or unnatural the unnatural is suicidal homicidal or accidental to determine the manner of death it is the combined study of medical and non medical part the non medical is the study at the scene of crime which is done by the police in our country and the medical part is done by the doctors conducting the autopsy now regarding the fatal period or the time of death that is the time which elapses between injury and death that is the fatal period this is the time which is elapsed from occurrence of the event of happening till the death occurs this event may be natural or unnatural this is the length of time for which the person remained alive so 
the volitional activities which he could have performed during this time they have they must have been estimated because in unnatural death caused by homicide this volitional activity after receiving the injury and the person remained for how long alive they are important in investigation of the crime so the fatal period basically depends upon the nature of events the part of the body involved and the systems of the body which has been involved fatally and extent of damage it is de determined by the study of chronological sequence of events leading to death now regarding determination of post mortem interval which means how much time has been elapsed between death and autopsy so this is the time which has been elapsed between death and autopsy post mortem interval and these events also occur in a definitive chronological order this is also known as time since death and these changes they are time related and the rate of appearance is in an order and they are affected by certain factors greater the post mortem interval greater will be the range of time since death so this is calculated from the changes which appear after death and they can be divided into immediate changes early changes and late changes the immediate immediate changes they are basically signs of death at the moment of dying and this is because of the loss of tripod of life any immediate changes or the immediate signs of death they are uh, signs of brain death permanent fixed dilated pupil absence of all nerve reflexes cessation of respiration without aids cessation of circulation or cardiac activity without any aid and then there are early changes and these changes help us in determination of time since death and they are cooling of the body post mortem cooling elgar mortis they are all the same name and the post mortem lividity post mortem staining and liver mortis it has also been called as then the rigor mortis which is also called as the post mortem rigidity putrefaction or decomposition then biochemical changes so these all help in determination of time since death now corpus delicti it's a criminal charge of homicide that whenever there is a criminal charge of homicide a positive identification of victim is very necessary and proof of death by the criminal act of the accused so first of all we have to identify the uh, culprit then his criminal act this collectively is termed as corpus delicti so that means whenever there is a crime of homicide along with the dead body we have to fix the responsibility we have to find out the person who is the culprit or responsible of this act then his act should be criminal then he can be caused as accused and this all body along with investigation this is termed as corpus delicti now about the techniques of autopsy they are basically the autopsy dissection methods and they are number 1 is the virkos technique rokitensky's technique lutelis technique and gons technique so these are various techniques 
which are used in various situations. Regarding the Virkus technique, Virkus method is an organ by organ removal and in this technique the organs are removed by one by one. It means they are dissected and removed. And this approach is good for demonstration of the pathological changes in individual organs. Especially in high risk autopsies or where the permission is limited to one organ. So in high risk autopsies when there is fulminant infection or uh, danger of being spread then it limits the spread. And this organ can be removed and examined which is under question. First the cranial cavity is exposed and from the back the spinal cord is opened followed by thoracic, cervical and abdominal organs. This is the most commonly used method. The advantage of this technique is that each organ can be studied in detail. Whereas the disadvantage of this technique is that the anatomico-pathological relationship is not preserved and thus it cannot be studied. Virko is also basically credited for various other important discoveries. His most widely known scientific contribution is the cell theory which built on his work the work of Theodore Schoen, basically the first person who identified cells was Theodore Schoen and this Virko further progressed his study. He was one of the first to accept the work of Robert Remack. Robert Remack was the individual who showed the origin of cells was the division of pre-existing cells. So this was the cell theory which was first initiated by Robert Remack and further was developed by Schwann and again it was further elaborated by the Virkos. So Virkos used the theory that all the cells arise from the pre-existing cells to lay the groundwork for the cellular pathology or the study of the diseases at the cellular level. His work made it more clear that diseases occur at the cellular level first and his work led to the scientist being able to diagnose diseases more accurately. Now the Rokitensky's technique born calor Von Karel von Rotkitensky was an Austrian pathologist. He was born in 1804 in Austria and died in 1878 in Vienna. He was a Bohemian physician pathologist and the Rokitensky's method involves in situ study of the organs. This in situ examination is also done in children. The advantage of this technique is that it is commonly preferred when the pathologists want to limit the spread of infection like HIV, Hepatitis B and other infections. But disadvantage of this technique is that the organs cannot be studied in detail. Next technique is the Lutelli's technique. Lutelli's method is en masse removal of all the viscera. Then they can be studied in detail after en masse removal. And in this method the cervical, thoracic, abdominal and pelvic organs they are removed en masse. But subsequently they are dissected as an organ block. The advantage of this technique is that it is the best as routine 
and preservation of the connection between the organs and organ systems they remain there the organ block then can be studied in detail now the gons technique the gons method of dissection is also an n block technique where the cervical and thoracic organs the abdominal organs of the upper thoracic organs and urogenital system or lower abdominal organs all are removed as separate blocks not n mass similarly the brain and the neck they are dissected as separate blocks pathologists are more comfortable with this technique all the organs should be weighed and brief description of the organ should be recorded now which is the best method of forensic autopsy dissection virkos organ by organ lutelles which is n mass rokitenskis which is in situ and gons which is n block so which is the most suitable in medical autopsies on hospital cases the anatomical orientation is observed and disease process is studied and in these cases the lutelles method is preferred in hospital autopsies the lutelles method is the best technique in medicolegal autopsies virkos or the gons they are more commonly used due to anatomical relationship and time saving processes now this is regarding the feedback you can scan and give me the feedback thank you very much this is all about the first lecture on autopsy in the year 2022 and i'll continue the topic in the next lecture please subscribe to my channel and this is my channel name dr javed ikbal kokhar lectures on forensic medicine